Anyway, two ribbons just means sharp turn here, look around, look to the left or look to the right and you'll see the next marker. That's all it means, really simple. Two ribbons means sharp turn. Look, look to your left, look to your right. So look to my right. Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap and today I'm out in the woods uh, doing one of my favorite things. I'm using my compass to find a lake that's back that way in the woods. I'm behind the woods, I'm, I'm, I'm in the forest that's behind my house. I'm about two kilometers from my house right now and I'm on a trail I've already made. Um, I doubt it would take a very skilled eye to even know I'm on a trail. The, the trails I make are uh, indistinguishable from game trails. I basically make a deer trail, I mean, I basically copy what the animals do. <laughs> I make a deer trail that allows a six foot person to get through, right? Deer trails are built for like three foot, <laughs> they're basically hobbit sized. <laughs> so I'm not, a, I'm very far from a hobbit at six foot four. Uh, so I, I, I make a trail that resembles uh, a game trail, an animal trail, just big enough for a human being to walk uh, without having to duck a lot and without having to clamber over things. Uh, so today I'm going to just talk about that a little bit. Uh, I'm going to stop the camera at various points as I walk through this and show you my process. Uh, it really doesn't have to be a lot of work. I remember when I was a younger man, I'd go in the woods with axes and all kinds of stuff. And uh, really, you don't, you don't need to work really hard at making a, a pretty good trail uh, that you can use to find your way through the woods. I should mention, why, why would you want to? Why, why do you need a trail? Well, I mean, it really depends on where you live, but where I live, the forest is very thick. Um, there's a lot of undergrowth, there's a lot of fallen trees, there's, it's very difficult to walk a straight line through the woods. Um, there's a lot of stuff in your way, and it's, it's very, and there's a lot of holes in the ground too, just, just voids. Um, so, it's, uh, once you've found a, a decent, relatively straight route from one point to another, to some place you want to go, uh, you don't want to lose that that route, <laughs> right? Once you've, and it's not easy to do. I mean, sometimes I'll be going this way a bit. No, that's no good. Go over this way, go over that way, right? You, you have to really uh, play around a little bit to find uh, the path of least resistance through the forest. Uh, there are some places where you got to take a, you know, I just, I'll, this is all I use, just a, what's this called, a silky gum by a relatively small, you know, saw, nine inch blade sort of thing. Um, this is all I use. Um, I don't really take down any trees. I don't do anything that's hard. Uh, I just get the things out of my way that are in my way and make the straightest line I can with the least amount of work. It's exactly what the game animals do. If, if a huge tree falls down, they just go around it <laughs> or they go under it or something like that. I kind of do the same thing. I'm not out here with chainsaws doing heavy work. Um, so once you've found a you know, relatively straight line to that you know, in this case, that, that magical lake where that has all the big trout that no one's ever heard of. Um, and there are those lakes in this province. Because, <laughs> you know, Nova Scotia is one of those places. It's, it's just peppered with lakes. There's, there's lakes everywhere. They're not particularly large lakes. Um, you know, anyone from Ontario or in, sort of inland would think most of our lakes are just tiny puddles, I suppose. But, um, you know, a lot of the lakes out where I live, there might only be a couple kilometers across. Right, you can get across them in a canoe in a few 15, 10, 15 minutes. Um, but they're all connected, right? So one lake really isn't um, an island unto itself, to use a mixed metaphor. Uh, if, if you're in a lake, that lake is probably got a river going to it from another lake, and it's got a river coming out of it to another lake. The lake I'm going to today is kind of unique, because as far as I could tell from looking on Google Earth, um, it's the very top of a system of lakes. There's no lake going into it. There's just water coming out of it, going to another lake, 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 to another lake da, 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 all the way to the ocean, right? Um, most of the lakes in where I live, if you find where the water comes out of the lake, follow that water, eventually you're going to get to the ocean. <laughs> so this is a lake where nothing's coming. It looks like a spring-fed lake, which uh, to anyone that fishes a lot, especially trout, which is what I like to fish, uh, sometimes, I mean, so one of two things might be the case. The lake might have almost no water in it and it's practically useless. It might be three feet deep, the whole thing, and it's just a collection point. Um, or it might have some deep holes in it that are relatively warm in the winter and the trout like being there, especially early in the season, and it might just be that magical spot. What really drew me to this particular lake is that there's no, uh, as far as I can tell, 
usually you can tell this looking on Google Earth. Um, there's no sign of any sort of ATV trails or logging roads. There's nothing near it at all, which to me indicates there's probably nobody fishing it. Now that could be because it's just a useless lake from a fishing point of view. <laughs> it might be, a, might be a very nice lake, but from a fishing point of view, it just might not really hold any fish. Um, or it's just too hard to get to it. Nobody wants to invest a shoe leather and time into it because, you know, I find a lot of people these days, um, they kind of don't like to fish if they have to walk too far from their vehicles. Um, I'm of a different elk. I, I really like getting in the woods and using my compass and finding stuff. And uh, yeah, people are going to ask. I don't tend to use a GPS, um, mainly out of cheapness, with a briefly jotted down map or printed, you know, you get a, get a map and print it off using your uh, printer and a compass. I can achieve what, you know, anyone can achieve with a GPS. I know there's different arguments on that. I don't want to get into it here. I enjoy the process of using a compass and using my wits and reading the land and trying to remember uh, what I saw when I was looking at the map and just trying to figure it out that way. I, I really enjoy that process. Also, you know, I guess the compass is more, more, more reliable. Like if you're using a GPS app on your phone and your phone loses its battery or doesn't get a signal or you drop it in a river, <laughs> you're out. Anyway, I'm gonna kill the camera now and I'm gonna just, uh, you know, go down this trail and as I see things that I think you might find interesting, I'll show you. So come along, let's, let's have a look. All right, first thing, this is not really a rule, but uh, one of the things I like doing is uh, I like tying my, you know, this is just some marking, marking tape. I uh, think that's the color I had. Uh, I like tying them to trees that have no top. See how that tree, the top broke off. Okay, the reason for that, even though this tree is, is rotten and, you know, it's not, not going to be here forever, but trees like this tend to stay standing for quite some time. I mean, they can be as soft as styrofoam and still be standing because they're not going to blow over. I mean, it's, it's sort of protected, it's, it's somewhat protected here. But, you know, like if you look at the tree just, just beyond it, right, that's like a sail. It's going to pick up the wind and if it gets weak, it's going to come over, right? And trees come down all the time here. If you look around the surrounding landscape, I mean, all you see is fallen trees. There's one right there, right? They're just, they're just everywhere, right? I mean, the trees are just constantly falling down. It's a windy place, it's a windy province, relatively close to the ocean here. I might be, I don't know, just a, I'm just a few kilometers from the ocean, right? So the trees are coming down all the time. But these trees that have had their tops broken off, right? Basically the wind broke the top off that tree. It's not showing up well, because there's one right behind it. That's a better view. They're not gonna come down. So it's, a, you know, if you put a, a trail marker on a tree like this, it's gonna be there for years and years and years. I, I usually like to take my knife and, and you know, so you can see I remove the bark, right? Also makes it more visible. Most, most trees you see in the woods, most, basically you don't tend to see this color in the woods, right? You'll see uh, this sort of gray bark color, or like there's a tree right over there that's got no bark, and it's sort of like a, a dull gray, a light colored gray, right? Here's another, another couple trees right over here. Right? These trees have no bark. They're that color. They're not the sort of yellowy color that this one is. So right off the bat, just by removing that bark, I've made the tray uh, just stand out a little bit, get my attention. And of course, there's a pink ribbon on it, which that's, that's a color you don't see out here. Right? And I've put this right at, this is eye level for me. So if I'm just standing normally, uh, and I'm relatively close, because you know, the ground level is very different all over the place here, but this should meet my eye, okay? So that's number one thing. Eye level and, you know, any, a good tree is a tree with no top because it's not gonna fall down. You're not gonna lose, you know, I can mark this trail out really well and then, you know, not, you know, really the places I fish, I do my trout fishing in uh, May and, uh, you know, sometimes April depends on the, there's only, a, some places are just no good in April. It really, May, June's the good months. Once July hits, I'm done trout fishing. I, I do all my fishing in the ocean, uh, mainly because uh, I like to fish trout. It's just not that fishing isn't quite as good at that time. Also, the flies just become murderous inland, especially uh, horse flies and deer flies. Uh, also, the fishing just starts getting good from shore. So that's when I switch to that. Um, uh, anyway, so, you know, I'll, I'll use this trail to get to the lake and then uh, I won't go back there until the following spring. So a lot of things can happen 
with the trees you've tied your markers on in that in a year's time right a, tra a trail can change a lot in this province so you want to put it to a tree that's not going to fall down i guess i've really beaten that point to death so i think you got it uh, another great point <laughs> is sight lines so i don't know if you can see but if you look this way i've got a, a pink ribbon tied on a tree right it's right right it's right there right so let's move back here a bit this nice uh i think it's black spruce spruce anyway I believe anyway this beautiful spruce tree had a lot of uh, branches in this area so i just used my folding saw remove the ones so when i'm standing here and i'm in, i can see this one and then i'm trying to think where does the trail go next i can look through that hole and i can see that pink ribbon on that little stick there's actually another pink ribbon on a tree a bit further beyond it right so i can see all that from here because i've removed that foliage and then when i went over here and tied this on i looked back and made sure i could see the pink back there there's my walking stick as well but i made sure i could see that one from this angle right because I'm, I'm higher in elevation I would, I would say i'm almost three feet the, the grade of the ground i'm about three feet higher than i was over there um, so everything's going to be different looking at it from this angle so i can see it from both ways so when you're marking a trail you're constantly looking back saying can i see it from you know when i'm going the other way on this trail can i can i see where i'm going all right so that's two things you know try to choose things to tie your ribbons to that aren't going to go anywhere and uh, also make sure you can see each from each point you've marked make sure it's relatively easy to see the next point you've marked i think this one here i might have even well, i put a little half oh, it's really not a blaze i wouldn't count that as a blaze uh, anyway looking over here i can see the next one over there it's kind of hard to see but i can see it there, i'm noticing actually right now there's is something in the way but it's not that big a deal let's go over here so i can see the next pink ribbon but maybe you can't i know to generally walk in this direction right so now as i'm getting closer but this fallen tree here sort of blocks view from where i was standing earlier but now, you know, I can see the next, the next mark. My goodness, look at that. Tips been chewed off that tree. That was either a very, very uh, tall deer or a moose, which we do have here. Uh, just uh, mainland moose are pretty rare, but we do have them. Oh well, yeah, something's definitely been chowing down on this, these tips. I mean, deer will eat tips, but this is, I guess a deer could reach that, a tall one. Uh, anyway, that's the point about ribbons. And I just use a single ribbon as long as I'm going in a consistent direction. When there's a really dramatic uh, directional change, I usually put two ribbons. So I'll show you that in a few minutes. All right, so here's a point where I was walking through the woods, uh, going in the direction. You know, you check your compass every, every few minutes. Uh, you know, often you'll pick something off the distance to walk towards, but where I am here, it's, there isn't really and you can't really see that far <laughs> so it's really hard to uh, pick a, a long off thing um, you know you look up and really all you see are are things that are within 50 yards of you it's about as far as you can see here uh, actually 50 yards is just about you know it's rare you can see that far 25 yards is probably more more typical the sort of end of your meaningful sight line <laughs> you know if someone wanted to hide and not have me find them, they wouldn't have to be far away uh, here. Uh, anyway, I was walking along this way and I could see just beyond it, this little uh, rock face here. I mean, it's not much, it's probably about eight, eight feet high or 10 feet high. But I was like, oh, I don't want to go over that. Then I checked my compass and it actually turns out I was supposed to be going this way. <laughs> so I put uh, two markers on here. All this tells me, and as you can see, I got another tree with no top. And I sort of ripped the bark off because you see down here it looks the same color as everything else in the woods. But I've ripped the bark off to make it very visible. And I've added two pink ribbons. Anyway, two ribbons just means sharp turn here, look around, 
Look to the left or look to the right and you'll see the next marker. That's all it means. It doesn't mean turn left, it doesn't mean turn right. It's really simple. Two ribbons means sharp turn. Look. Look to your left, look to your right. I look to my right, can't see anything. Nothing over there. Uh, I look to my left and I actually see, I see a ribbon. Right here, right? And then I look a little further and I can see one up there as well. So this is the way to go. So I'm going to keep going straight this way. I mean, I don't, I only put the sort of double, a double ribbon when it's, you know, like a 90 degree turn. Anything, you know, 20 degrees, 25 degrees, that sort of thing, I don't bother. Because uh, you're not going to lose your way for the most part. Because uh, usually the trail you've marked, you've found the path of least resistance, right? And actually most of the time I'm actually following deer trails. Uh, if I can find a deer trail, uh, that's part of the joy of this. You're sort of following the other animals. You're using the woods the same way they do. So if I can find a deer trail that's going roughly in the direction I want to go, uh, why bother doing more work than that? Just follow it and mark it and remove the branches or whatever's in the way that's, you know, because deer only need a tree to be hobbit height, whereas you need the tree to be, you know, six feet high. So I want to walk upright, you know, if I'm here in a backpack or whatever. I don't want to be stooping over and having to crawl under things and all that rubbish, right? I don't want to sort of be, uh, you know, be civilized. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, you know, I can find a nice uh, hallway, a nice corridor, and, uh, I'll use it. So uh, I thought I'd make a point here about uh, what I call uh, probing. Uh, so I'm trying to go roughly northeast. That's the vector I've chosen from my point of origin to get to this lake. Uh, if I go northeast, I'll either hit the lake or I'll hit the river coming out of the lake because the lake sort of runs perpendicular to that, to that path. So when I was at this point in my trail, I saw this nice sort of open, see how the, sort of the, the landscape just opens up Looks like easy going. Um, so I wanted to just go that way. Hey, I don't have to do nothing. I can just go that way. But as I started walking there, it's just unbelievably treacherous. It's just, it's just, just, just like, it's just mound after mound after mound after hole after, you know, and all this sort of, you know, waist high brush that's kind of annoying. If you go through that when it's raining, you can get totally drenched. Uh, I mean, it's not undoable. If I was coming out here for the day, that's the way I'd go because it's basically the clearest path. But I'm trying to make a trail that I can use over and over again for different things, right? Um, so to make that into like a, uh, a a trail that's nice to walk on, that's enjoyable, I got to do a lot of work and I don't want to do that work. So I probably spent the better part of an hour messing around here. What if I go this way a little bit? What if I go that way a little bit? And so on and so forth. And then I noticed that just over, over, you know, I'll just instead of choosing this vector, just go over a little bit and go parallel to that vector which is still roughly northeast, right? Not perfectly. Um, I could go in there and it actually is pretty easy walking. And I found a deer trail in there that goes in roughly the direction I wanted to go. But I spent an hour messing around to find that, but it's okay, I'm in no rush here, right? I'm just out enjoying the woods. This is, this is basically how I enjoy the woods. I don't tend to hike. I tend to have some goal or purpose when I'm out here. This purpose of uh, these hikes is finding the lake and developing a, a reasonably uh, good uh, route to the lake without doing too much work, but just use it, putting in the shoe leather. So to, to make this little hole here, you know, I had to do a little bit of work, right? I mean, this, this tree here had a, had a lot of branches that were in the way, so I just removed the lower branches. Those lower branches on a tree always, you can see here, these ones must be in the shade. Lower branches on a tree always die anyway, right? So it's not a lot of work to just, you know, knock them off. Uh, had to remove the lower branches off this tree. But the tree's still fine, doing great, right? These, uh, I think this is a black spruce, uh, could be a fir, uh, I think it's a black spruce. Um, they tend to, um, you know, <laughs> people are already noticing I haven't got the greatest, uh, you know, knowledge of which tree is which, but I believe that's a spruce. Anyway, um, yeah, these trees tend to be tall, they tend to be spindly, and they, their lower branches always die. That's why, you know, oftentimes the lower branches are the best things for starting fire because they're usually dead and they're relatively uh, protected by the branches above them and so on and so forth. So I had to remove those, right? And do a little bit of work here. But I finally punched a little hole and that hole led me to a, a reasonably easy to follow deer trail in here, right? So yeah, that's just uh, the sort of thing you have to do. That's just part of the process. A note on uh, making blazes. Um, 
So a blaze is just a, a part of a tree where you remove the bark. And uh, blazes are not as readily visible as, you know, pink or orange or, you know, bright green, you know, that sort of yellow, you know, ribbons, uh, marker tape. Um, so when you have a blaze, it needs to be almost directly in line. Right, if you're standing on the trail a distance away, it should be almost in the middle of the line of the trail, so it's very uh, easy to see, right? Now, I didn't have to use an axe to make these. A lot of, you see guys on TV or whatever using an axe to make a blaze. You, you would need an axe to make a blaze on a tree that's, you know, bigger in diameter, eight inches in diameter and larger, thick, heavy bark, and so on and so forth. Uh, this sort of smaller diameter tree, this one's probably five inches. That's what I like to use. You, you have to make a blaze on a live tree uh, because it just shows up better because uh, the wood inside is going to be a yellow color, which is not a color you tend to see out here in the woods. And, uh, you know, also with a live tree, uh, it'll create sap on warmer days and uh, the blaze will become a bit shiny, which also helps you see it sometimes. Um, but yeah, a knife will is all you need to, uh, your knife's good and sharp. But you'll see these are all, I mean, this is the direction I need to walk. This is st straight line, right? Now I, now I turn a little bit, right? But I, I know roughly where I am here. It's a unique sort of, uh, th there's a point of reference here. This is weird rock, which is really obvious. You know, I sort of just remember that rock. Uh, when you spend a lot of time in the woods, you just learn to read landscapes. There's a clearing over there that I find familiar. There's a lot of familiar things here, so I sort of know this spot. I know that once I get past this blaze, I'm only going to walk a few more feet and I got to take this uh, left hand turn going this way. It's really the only way you can walk because there's, I, I've almost fenced myself in the way uh, someone would set up a snare. I can't really go this way because it's fallen trees in the way, all these branches in the way. I have to go left. So I funneled myself a nice way out. Um, so it's another little trick. You know, if there's fallen trees, if there's you know, brush and stuff like that, you put it on the side of your trail to, to funnel yourself into it. <laughs> it's just that much harder to lose your way. But you now I'm going the other way in the trail and there's a blaze I've marked. I'm using blazes here because I, I've run in a ribbon. <laughs> I just didn't feel like, you know, uh, for me it's a bit of a drive to the store. So, um, you know, I use blazes and ribbons. I use them interchangeably. I use the same system. You know, one blaze for go this way two blazes for sharp turn here. Look to your left, look to your right, find the next blaze. I use, this, I use them interchangeably. Right. And in terms of the, the ease of marking them, if you have a tree that's you know, relatively um, uh, green, right? Not hard. And again, you, you make them at, at eye level, right? And the trees, these don't really, the tree can recover from a wound like that. Right, um, uh, there's trees in this forest that I blazed 10 years ago that are still totally fine. Right, they're, they're equipped to handle that. Right, just like you are equ equipped to handle uh, damage to your skin. Too much, you know, if you, if you cut all the way around a tree, of course that'll kill this kind of tree, that'll kill it. But uh, yeah, that doesn't really bother the tree too much. They can shrug that off and get on with their lives. All right, so I thought I'd walk you through uh, the last leg of the little bit of trail I cleared today. I didn't have any ribbons, so you can see I'm just using, using blazes to mark these trails. Um, so I was going through this uh, forested area here. That's relatively open, it's not too bad going, you know. But then I could just, all of a sudden I could feel uh, wind. And uh, I became very excited because I could start to see, uh, feel, you see it looks like it's opening up a little bit over here. I thought, could this be the lake or the river or something like that? Could I have found it? Could I be here? Could this be it? And I broke out into this open area. I started thinking of a, that song at the end of The Sound of Music. I'm every mountain and all that stuff. And I broke out over this beautiful scenery. Sorry if the wind's a bit bad on the microphone. Uh, so I just walked a little bit. This is a deer trail, believe it or not. And uh, I saw a ravine. I was like, oh, a ravine. It must be the river. But it's not. It's not anything. 
And I mean, the river coming out of this lake is barely a river. So even if I'd found something like a drainage ditch or just moving water of some kind, anything, uh, that would be it. But no, I don't think this is the, I don't think if I follow the ravine that way, I'll get to the lake. I'm facing northeast and I think I might, I mean, I'm done for the day today. I'll go back and look at the map and, uh, you know, make a decision. I mean, maybe this is the drainage way that comes out of that lake. Maybe. It's possible, I suppose. I couldn't really, I mean, I was down there for five minutes just tooling around. I couldn't really detect uh, any sign. So I'll have to go back and look at the contour map. Maybe I have to go over the next ridge. Maybe it's over the next ridge. That's just the nature of this, this process. Um, you know, when you're going through the deep woods, especially when you're cutting trail, your sense of distance is very distorted because you, you know, you might have spent an hour cutting a hundred yards, <laughs> just removing branches and, you know, stomping on fallen trees. Uh, basically, if there's a tree that's about, you know, knee or knee high, I'll try to try to kick it down, that sort of thing to get it out of the way. So I mean, you're you're, you're doing what you can to sort of punch your way through, and uh, feels like you've been, you know, you're you feel like you've been there, gone a kilometer but you've only gone a tenth of a kilometer. So my sense of how far I've come from where I started and how far this is from my house is very distorted. Uh, I'll have to look at the map and think about it again. But anyway, uh, it's like a progress of a kind. You know, I've sort of uh, found my way out into this terrain. Anyway, this is nice. Uh, it, gets, it, it, it goes back to being thick forest, <laughs> not very far. I got maybe uh, this, you know, maybe a hundred yards and then I'm back to forest. <laughs> Too bad it's not like this all the way to the lake because this is really easy walking. Uh, and who knows, maybe there's a really good uh, deer trail that'll take me there, but anyway, that's about it for today. So, <laughs> breaking trail, uh, not without its perils. Uh, you can see I got a bit of an injury here. Uh, it was a, kind of a miraculous uh, uh, turn of physics. Miraculous in the sense that I stomped something on the ground and a piece of wood flew up and hit me in the face. So of all the things that could have hit, it hit me in the face. Also miraculous, miraculous in the sense that it didn't hit me in the eye. Because <laughs> if it did this to my uh, nose and cheek, imagine what it could have done to my eye. Just pure luck, pure luck. And that's just the nature of being out in the woods doing stuff. And you know, yeah, I think I was in a sort of like Superman mode where I was breaking branches and kicking and punching and you know, smashing stuff. And I was really going, going good, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, not the, the careful, measured uh, pace that uh, is uh, risk-free. I was sort of really getting into it. <laughs> Swashbuckling adventures and such. And uh, yeah, so now it looks like I'm a teenager again. I get this thing on my face, but yeah, that's just how it goes. Uh, not the end of the world, and I'm so glad it didn't get me in the eye. So anyway, that's it for today. You know, making a trail, it's, uh, it's always a great way to get out in the woods and, you know, create a route to go from a place you've been to a place you haven't been before, and always a bit of an adventure. I mean, it was, I was so excited when I broke out into this clearing here, and then I was so disappointed when I realized it wasn't the lake. I just, uh, I was like, oh, it's going up now, it's going down. The lake must be down there. I looked, oh, it's just nothing. Uh, <laughs> that's just how it goes. Hey, so it's the, uh, the next day, and uh, I was just out working on the trail again. And uh, I noticed uh, a marker flag, like, you know, a ribbon. And so I went over to it and I noticed it was in a line, basically uh, a survey line. So it wasn't cut out or anything like that, but uh, someone had tied a marker and another marker and another marker and they were all the same. Uh, and they, they didn't look like the sort of thing you'd buy, you know, at Walmart or Canadian Tire. It looked like, like surveyors marking tape. It just usually looks different. Uh, and they were going roughly the direction I wanted to go, northeast. So I just kept following them and following them and following them. And uh, here we are. The lake that I was looking for. And I was right on course. I mean, I was basically walking, I guess, to some extent parallel to that survey line. Right? So that's good. I mean, it's a very small lake. I mean, I would say... 
maybe two football fields at the most. If that's the, I can see the other end there. It doesn't look far. <laughs> You know, like I could, I think I could run to it, you know, without having to stop to catch my breath. Uh, so it's it's a very, at least as far as I can tell from where I'm standing here, a very small lake with almost nothing coming in it. I mean, this, this is the, uh, that's the little creek coming in of it over there. And it's just nothing. I mean, uh, I don't even, I'd be surprised if, fish could get up it. I mean, you, you never know uh, what fish can do with spring and what they're able to get up and get down and that sort of thing. And all, of course, uh, minnows can go places fish can't go and, you, you know, juvenile fish can go places adult fish can't go and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's, it's possible this lake holds trout. Um, so that's, that's interesting. But the part of the story I was not anticipating was uh, what's over here. So let me just take you back where I came from. What I noticed as I was walking <laughs> walking into here uh, Where is it now? Yeah, there it is. Couldn't get around this. I crossed this, an extremely well-defined trail. Uh, I'm not sure what made this trail. This doesn't look like some hillbilly ATV trail. I mean, this looks like someone has some sort of machine out here, like an Argo or something, or even uh, something like a caterpillar, right? So, I mean, yeah, it's not a, this is not a trail you could get a, a four-wheel drive down, I think, unless you had a really awesome Jeep or something like that. But uh, this is not the secluded, inaccessible magic lake that I thought it was. Well, anyway, that's the end of this adventure. Uh, I don't really know if I want to continue working on my trail to this lake, I have to make up my mind about that. It's not a huge lake. Um, it might still have fish in it, but you know, it's really not much of a river coming out of it. Um, so, you know, uh, you, you sort of want a thing that's well connected to the, the system so that you know that there's trout moving back and forward from lake to lake. I don't know if they're going up into that. I really don't know how much water is in it. It could just be a, you know, it, I believe it is sort of spring fed but it might just be where the initial water collects that feeds the system. I know there's trout downstream if you go far enough, but uh, yeah, really hard to say what, uh, what we're dealing with here. And the fact that it's, uh, I mean, there's basically an ATV highway going to this lake. So, you know, it's not like it's a, you know, a lake that no one goes to, that's inaccessible, that you can only walk to, the whole, the whole idea I had. There's a road going to this that anyone with an ATV can get to. Looks like a pretty good road, easy walking too. So uh, not the magic lake I thought it might be. Probably not worth my time to work on this much more. <laughs> I think I'll probably still come out here in trout season just see, you know, now that I know there. I'll come out here another day and follow this trail and see where it goes. Maybe it goes, you know, somewhere that's reasonable to get to so it's easy to get to the lake. I'll have a look, but uh, yeah, I think I'm done developing a trail to this lake. I only spent a couple day, a couple afternoons working on it, so it's not a big deal. I enjoy being outdoors no matter what. Anyway, so ends the, uh, you know, the saga of finding the, uh, the hidden magical lake. Not so hidden, not so magical, <laughs> after all. But anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.